Welcome to TAFAF Maastricht 2023. So I'm going to take you around the selections that we have chosen. We first start with a wall of women artists from our stock, that an artist that we've been dealing with for a number of years. So the first painting is by Emmy Bridgewater, who we just had a very successful show, which ended at the end of uh, January. Uh, she was one of the only four artists that uh, Breton chose for the last official Surrealist show, which was at the Gallery Met in 1947. She was the only four, four English artist, sorry, that was chosen by Breton. Then we have a beautiful small Vera da Silva that scale is extraordinary. It really could be any size, but it's very, very beautiful. Below which we have a, photo, a, a portrait of Paul Elwa's last wife by Valentin Hugo. A really beautiful, beautiful drawing. Then we have this very opera, op painting by Apollonia, um, which speaks for itself. Then we have um, a small um, drawing without paper by Gago, who I think is an extraordinary artist. Uh, she's the, one of the first, we have a few other Latin American artists, but she's there. And then there's a Verisco here, which is a piece that you can um, alter yourself. Um, then an artist we've dealt with a lot, um, Nanda Vigo. Sadly, at the moment, the stand is missing and it should be here before the end of the day, but uh, it'll be too late to do the video on it. This piece has, has been exhibited a lot. It was in the Zero show um, a few years ago at the Stedlick and in Berlin. It's just got back from Valencia and somehow the, the, the base and it have, have got um, divorced, but they're going to get remarried later today. The, then we have a Dada Minor from, uh, from the, early, the late 50s, early 60s, uh, which is, speaks for itself. I think these orange ones are particularly sexy. Then we have two paintings by Miyawaki, who was in Rome in the early 60s. And these two paintings are made with ground, she's ground down marble and put it into the paint. Then later, when she went back to um, Japan, she, ma she married Isasaki and then started making sculpture, maybe um, being married to a top architect, it was easier to get sculptural commissions. Then here is the most beautiful little um, Mira Schendel that I bought a number of years ago and sold to the fabled Maclow collection in New York and was able to buy it back a few months ago. It's a really, it's got everything you want. It's, um, and you know, so with Gago and her, she was really one of the, the main concrete artists from South America. And, and this is, there's absolutely, it, this has everything you possibly want. Then there's a small um, painting by Alice Rayon. Um, and she was, uh, I think, speaks for itself. Then we have a couple of drawings by Marlo Moss, who, um, who's having a, is becoming more famous now, but she was sort of forgotten and recently has come back. Then we have an extraordinary, this little wall of two masterpieces by two highly important um, female artists post-war, although um, 
both of them were active before the war. There's this Lozenberg is extraordinary. Her work is just beautiful. She never, she only used oil paint. So the, 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 the condition of the paint is always there. And just the tension of how, you know, it, the movement and the this and that, work, which is. And we will be showing um, Lozenberg in May at the New York TEPAF at doing a one person show. Then here we have the, an extraordinary painting by um, Marlow Moss, which is extraordinarily rare. And um, she was a, a friend, great friend of, of Mondrian's. In fact, she beat Mondrian to the double line. So, you know, she's not an imitator, she's a, um, a collaborator with him. Then we have one or two um, early, very early printout computer drawings by Vera Molnar. You know, people don't realize that these, these, drawing, these computer drawings were made um, in, compu in a computer that was probably the size of this stand. And they could only do them late at night and took hours and hours and hours. And what is marvelous is you still, you see the, the sort of oink oink of, of the, how they were set out. And she's extraordinary. Then we have a very wall of quite minimal work. Uh, then here is a, a Gurkha. We recently did a show at the end of last year of Gurkha, and, and it was one of the most beautiful shows I've ever put up. And when I, his widow said to us, it was probably the most beautiful show she'd seen of this period of his work. And I got the same impression of feeling when I first saw his work as I did when I first saw Agnes Martin's work in the early 70s. Then, um, then we have this Morale from his most sort of famous series, which was called the, which were the telephone books. Don't ask me how he, how he does it, but um, he would take pages of, of telephone books at random and made, a, made the design for this. It's quite extraordinary, beautiful. Then we have this uh, Le Blanc, which has, um, which is marvelous because when you move from side to side, it goes the darker bit to the to the lighter bit, and then it then it reverses itself. It's an, a very beautiful example of it. <coughs> Then we have Stout, who's just um, celebrating his 90th birthday. We've shown him um, a few times in the gallery and always have him in uh, our stands at art fairs. And they, um, they speak for themselves, really. Then this Biazi, which, um, as you move round, the black moves with you. Then, then we have Billy Apple, a neon from the rainbow. We did an exhibition last year of the rainbows, and there were three rainbows of neon rainbows we had, and two have been sold to um, major museums. And this uh, he wanted to do this show in, in London in 1964 or, or so with Robert Fraser and even Robert was, couldn't, uh, it was too out, far out for him. So it was all done in uh, the Paul Bianchini Gallery in 1965 and then nothing, I did, very little sold if any and then it was all put back in crates 
and Billy found these crates um, a couple of years ago and wanted to show them with us, so we were able to do that. But the, the point is that the rainbow, when all those lights are on, it throws off a white light. Um, so that's that. Now, this is an extraordinary drawing by de Chirico. Um, it's sort of, what I love about it is that it's monochromatic except this hand, which is, is color, which is also like a Picasso almost. And you get the feeling of a great hulk or something where, you know, the, they're turning from stone into a human. And it's a really extraordinary um, example. This de Chirico has just come back from an exhibition at the Palais de Tokyo organized by Cyprian Gaillard uh, called Humpty Dumpty. And it was in a huge sort of uh, plexiglass cage in the entrance, in the first room as you came into the show. Then we have Stanzak, who's an extra, you know, extraordinary artist with an extraordinary sort of story. He was born in Poland, and then the war came along, and they, they, were, they got to Siberia. In Siberia, he lost the use of his right hand, although he was right-handed. And from there, they got um, finally through, I think, um, Uganda to London. He studied in London, then he went to um, Ohio. He never was in New York, which was probably detrimental to his career. And this is all taped. And he made, he didn't have assistance. He did all the taping, making a tape himself, which is quite extraordinary to think that a, a right-handed person who was forced to be left-handed um, did this. And the play on colors is, you might think you're seeing such and such a color, but that color is not in it. So it's a sort of um, the Black Mountain teaching of Albers was, was a big influence on him, I think. Then, this, uh, then there's Felicia Burstein, who is a recent discovery for me, and, and we have Four, four of them in our um, Not Bronze show. Um, this is one of the last work she did and before she had to flee um, Colombia to go to Paris where sadly she died very soon afterwards. Um, people think it's a Chamberlain, but it isn't, there's a, but there's such energy and, and this little extra bit to it. Um, I, d I just find her extraordinary and I really want to be able to work more with the estate and, um, and do an exhibition sooner rather than later. But it really, it, 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 it's got such life and this sort of flower bursting forward from it is is amazing. Then <clears throat> we did a last year at, at Freeze Masters, we did an exhibition, uh, did a sort of mini retrospective of Constant with Gary Borzo in, in Amsterdam. And I really, when I saw the show a number of years ago, Constant, at, at the Rainer Affair, I was completely amazed. I knew his work slightly, but I didn't realize how important he was and how great. And this is one of the sort of paintings he did after he'd finished New Babylon because of the disillusionment of, of what was happening in the, war, in the world, like the Vietnam War. So this is the sort of the end of his life. And this was one of his favorite paintings because he made a, a print of it. But it, it's 
incredibly beautiful and well painted. <coughs> then we have a little bit of um, Central Europe with um, this painting by Imre Back, who sadly died the other day. But I think he's the most interesting of all the Hungarian painters. There was, as well as, he, there was the Peck workshop, which were enamels, and I think the other artists are more interesting as an enamelist. But, but this, I don't think that Back was the best enamelist. And the, the, vi the vibrancy of this painting, and, the, um, and it's beautifully painted. And, you know, and if you think this was being done in communist Hungary at the time, he had visited England in about 65, where he saw a pop show which changed his um, style a lot. And this is really um, 1970, I think. Uh, and it really gives you, you know, People think it's a stellar or something, but it's got um, such movement to it and, and beauty. He's a, he's a really, truly important um, Hungarian artist. And then we have this piece by Bracco, um, who's from the Balkans and an artist I've known for years and I've loved. He's more of an artist. He's more known by the artists and by the public. But it, it, it's an amazing paint piece. Then, finally, we have a little room, which is, so we have Filko, who I think is an, uh, from Slovakia, then Czechoslovakia. And I think he, he is the most exciting of all of them. The guy was quite strange. He went to New York in the 80s and I think lived in the Chelsea Hotel. And he never learned English. And I don't think he ever went out, I think. But um, there really, there's a sort of people are beginning to get it. The Tate has an installation. The, um, the Kunstmuseum in The Hague has one. The, the um, Kunstmuseum in, in Basel has one. And so people are slowly coming round to seeing his importance. Then here's a, a, little, a little bit of sort of zero and non-zero, as it were. So this is Uka, and um, he's painted this on a kimono, but it's, you know, it's just what, what it is. And, and, and then this is Gravenet, who was a sort of, didn't want to be a member of Zero, but was exhibited a lot at the same time. And these are all about chance. Um, he, you spin a coin and, and placing and everything. Then we have the last European piece, which is Tijeri, who was who, whose hundredth birthday is, would have been this year, and his parents were uh, Japanese immigrants to America, so he was born in Watts on the 7th of December, 1923. And on his 18th birthday was Pearl Harbor Day. And so as a birthday present, he was interned. And then the way you got out of internment, which I never understood, was you joined up. And he was badly wounded in, um, in Italy. And he came back and then he took a GI scholarship to, New York, to, to Paris and studied under Zadkine and got involved with the, um, 
with a cobra, and then he never went back to uh, to um, America. And they, he, except he did, a, um, I think, a couple of years in the mid '60s in Minneapolis. But he he's a very exciting artist, and he's going to be. He was in a show again at the Rainer Affair about artists who foreign artists living in Amer in in Paris, and then they're going to be next year they're going to be one or two shows on the GI um, artists which will be fascinating it's going to be at the great starting at the gray art gallery in in Manhattan in which he will be included but um, and then from then from Paris he went to Holland and he never he never left and he's, he's very well known in Holland, and there are a lot of sort of uh, public sculptures around, but he's lesser known in, in other parts, which is sort of slightly the same with Gurkha, who's very, very well known in, in, in Germany, but so hardly a known away from Germany, something I hope to be able to rectify. At Freeze Masters this year, we'll be doing um, a two-man show of a Tajiri with Wagamaka because they both exhibited together at the 1962 Venice Biennale in the Dutch Pavilion, and we thought this would be a good chance to wish Tajiri a hundredth birthday. Then we have a. Latin American wall and an absolutely exquisite little painting by Cordiera. Cordiera is, I don't know if there are any paintings by Cordiera in, in, the, in Europe, but he's one of, one of the most important concrete artists from Brazil. He was originally from Italy and, and went to, to Brazil after the war. <clears throat> and then in the 60s, he became more sort of pop orientated. And then just before the end of his life, he went into computer drawings and sadly died very young. But he is a major, major artist. Then there are two artists we've um, been involved in for a few years. There's um, Arkai, from, who was from Cuba and went to, um, to France. And this particular one was in a, a show recently at the Haus der Kunst in Munich. And he was one of the members of the sort of group of 10 from Cuba. He stopped painting in 1962 when he w and he, w he made seriographs and he then became the seriographer to any artist in all the great artists who wanted to do seriographs in, in, um, in Paris. Then the last work is by Caioli, who was a member of the structuralists. He was originally from the Argentine and went to Paris and um, in the early 50s. And he was obsessed with, with plexiglass. And whenever he made any money, he'd buy more plexiglass, I think to the surprise and annoyance of his children. So that they, rather than they being getting sent on a holiday, he bought himself some plexiglass. I hope you have a chance to come to the to Tefa. I think it's, one of, the, it's the, one of the most exciting fairs in the world and probably the last great fair where you can see the whole of the history of art, 5,000 years of, or more of modern art. I hope to see you here. Thank you.